So the awesome story, uh, it begins about 40 years ago when my mom and my dad came to Canada. My mom left Nairobi, Kenya. My dad left a small village outside of Amritsar, India, and they got here in the late 1960s. They settled in a shady suburb, about an hour east of Toronto, and they settled into a new life. Uh, they saw their first dentist, they ate their first hamburger, um, and they had their first kids. My sister and I grew up here, um, and we had quiet, happy childhoods. Uh, we had close family, good friends, a quiet street. We grew up taking for granted a lot of the things that my parents couldn't take for granted when they grew up. Things like um, power always on in our houses, uh, things like schools across the street and hospitals down the road and popsicles in the backyard. Uh, we grew up and we grew older. Um, I went to high school, I graduated, I moved out of the house, I got a job, found a girl, I settled down, uh, and I realize it sounds like a bad sitcom or a Cat Stevens song, um, but uh, life was pretty good, life was pretty good. Um, 2006 was a great year. Uh, under clear blue skies in July in the wine region of Ontario, I got married, surrounded by 150 family and friends. 2007 was a great year. I um, graduated from school and I went on a road trip with two of my closest friends. Here's a picture of me and my friend Chris. Um, on the coast of the Pacific Ocean, we actually saw seals out of our car window. We pulled over to take a quick picture of them uh, and then blocked them with our giant heads. Um, so you, you can't actually see them, but it was breathtaking, uh, believe me. Um, 2008 and 2009 were a little tougher. Um, I know that they were tougher for a lot of people, not just me. Um, first of all, the news was so heavy. Uh, it's still heavy now, and it was heavy before that, but you know, when you flip open a newspaper, when you turn on the TV, it was about ice caps melting, wars going on around the world, earthquakes, hurricanes, and an economy that was wobbling on the brink of collapse, and then eventually did, did collapse, and uh, so many of us losing our homes, or our jobs, or our retirements, or our livelihoods. 2008 and 2009 were heavy years for me for another reason, too. I was going through a lot of personal problems at the time. Um, my marriage wasn't going well, and uh, we just were going further and further apart. Uh, one day my wife came home from work and summoned the courage through a lot of tears to have a very honest conversation. Um, and she said, I don't love you anymore. And it was um, one of the most painful things I'd ever heard, and certainly the most heartbreaking thing I'd ever heard, until only a month later when I heard something even more heartbreaking. My friend Chris, who I just showed you a picture of, had been battling mental illness for some time, and for those of you whose lives have been touched by mental illness, you know how challenging uh, it can be. I spoke to him on the phone at 10.30 p.m. on a Sunday night, um, we talked about the TV show we watched that evening, and uh, Monday morning I found out that he disappeared. Uh, very sadly, he took his own life, and it was a really heavy time, and as these dark clouds were circling me, and I was finding it really, really difficult to think of anything good, I said to myself that I really needed a way to focus on the positive somehow. So I came home from work one night, and I logged onto the computer and I started up a tiny website called 1000awesomethings.com. I was trying to remind myself of those simple, universal little pleasures that we all love but we just don't talk about enough. Things like waiters and waitresses who bring you free refills without asking, being the first table to get called up to the dinner buffet at a wedding, wearing warm underwear from just out of the dryer, or when cashiers open up the new check only at the grocery store, you get to be first in line, even if you were last at the other line. Let's move right in there. Um, and, you know, slowly over time, I started putting myself in a better mood. I mean, 50,000 blogs are started a day. And so my blog was just one of those 50,000. And nobody read it except for my mom. <laughs> Although, I, I should say that my traffic did skyrocket and go up by 100% when she forwarded it to my dad. Um, <laughs> And then I got excited when it started getting tens of hits. 
And then I started getting excited when it started getting dozens, and then hundreds, and then thousands, and then millions. I started getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then I got a phone call. And the voice at the other end of the line said, you just won the best blog in the world award. I was like, that sounds totally fake. <laughs> Which African country do you want me to wire all my money to? <laughs> um, but it turns out, um, I jumped on a plane and I ended up walking a red carpet between Sarah Silverman and Jimmy Fallon and Martha Stewart. I went on stage to accept the Webby Award for Best Vlog, and the surprise and the, you know, just the amazement of that was only overshadowed by my return to Toronto when, in my inbox, ten literary agents were waiting for me to talk about putting this into a book. Flash forward the next year, and the Book of Awesome has now been on number one on the bestseller list for 20 straight weeks. <laughs> but look, I, I said I wanted to do three things today. I said I wanted to tell you the awesome story, I wanted to share with you the three A's of awesome, and I wanted to leave you with a closing thought. So let's talk about those three A's. Over the last few years, I haven't had that much time to really think. But lately, I have had the opportunity to take a step back and ask myself, you know, what is it over the last few years that sort of helped me um, grow my website, but also grow myself? And I've summarized those things for me personally as three A's. Um, they are attitude, awareness, and authenticity. I'd love to just talk about each one briefly. So attitude. Look, we're all going to get lumps, and we're all going to get bumps. Um, None of us can predict the future, but we do know one thing about it, and that's that it ain't going to go according to plan. Um, we will all have high highs and big days and proud moments of smiles on graduation stages, father-daughter dances at weddings, and healthy babies screeching in the delivery room. But between those high highs, we may also have some lumps and some bumps, too. It's sad and, you know, it's, it's not pleasant to talk about, but, you know, your husband might leave you. Your girlfriend could cheat. Your headaches might be more serious than you thought, or you know, your dog could get hit by a car on the street. It's not a happy thought, but your kids could get mixed up in gangs or bad scenes. Um, your mom could get cancer. Uh, your dad could get mean. And there are times in life when you will be tossed on the well, too, with twists in your stomach and with holes in your heart. And when that bad news washes over you, and when that pain sponges and soaks in, I just really hope you feel like you've always got two choices. One, you can swirl and twirl in gloom and doom forever. Or two, you can grieve and then face the future with newly sober eyes. Having a great attitude is about choosing option number two and choosing, no matter how difficult it is, no matter what pain hits you, choosing to move forward and move on and take baby steps into the future. The second A is awareness. I love hanging out with three-year-olds. I love the way that they see the world because they're seeing the world for the first time. I love the way that they can stare at a bug crossing the sidewalk. I love the way that they'll stare slack-jawed at the first baseball game with wide eyes and a mitt on their hand, soaking in the crack of the bat and the crunch of the peanuts and the smell of the hot dogs. I love the way that they'll spend hours picking dandelions in their backyard and putting them into a, a nice uh, centerpiece for Thanksgiving dinner. I love the way that they see the world because they're seeing the world for the first time. Having a sense of awareness is just about embracing your inner three-year-old. Because you all used to be three years old. That three-year-old boy is still part of you. That three-year-old girl is still part of you. They're in there. And being aware is just about remembering that you saw everything you've seen for the first time once, too. So there was a time when it was your first time ever hitting a string of green lights on the way home from work. It was, there was the first time you walked by the open door of a bakery and smelt, smelt the bakery air. It was the first time you pulled a $20 bill out of your old jacket pocket and said, found money. The last day is authenticity. And for this one, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, let's go all the way back to 1932, when on a peanut farm in Georgia, a little baby boy named Roosevelt Greer was born. Roosevelt Greer, or Rosie Greer, as people used to call him, grew up and grew into a 